focus a lot in PFOS or PER and polyfluoroalkyl substances and built into that are various um, levels of investigation, risk assessment, management, remediation, a variety of different services. The human health concerns of PFOS, it focuses a lot on developmental effects. So young children, pregnant mothers, um, the fetus, the developmental effects occur at very low doses for PFOS and PFOA, which are two of the PFOS compounds that have been widely studied. There's also some potential cancer risks with these compounds as well. They're actively studying that. Um, right now, one of the big challenges is a risk assessor as a toxicologist. The U.S. states, U.S. EPA, Many of the European and other countries around the world don't all agree on how toxic these chemicals are. There's a lot of disagreement on how to interpret the studies, how to model those studies to exposures that actually occur in daily life for most folks. So really understanding how to, to manage those, that's going to be a key um, issue that's going to continue to develop over the next few years and that you know, geosyntech scientists are actively tracking and participating in the discussions. I've seen this coming for many years. I know the chemistry, I know the key research papers, I know the key players and, and, and folks out there doing the work. I can look at this science with that history but also understanding that we don't need to panic. We can use the scientific tools that we've used for other emerging contaminants all along and we can rationally go about this in a scientific an environmental framework we've used for decades now. Um, that's one of the things that the public is concerned about, the clients are concerned about. They find out they have PFOS present and there's panic. These are just organic chemicals. We can effectively measure and monitor and evaluate and control and understand the risks. And again, manage these problems both on a site-specific and a product-specific basis, really effectively using science.